Well, if those people say that, then they're ignorant of what's happening right now in the field of cellular healing. Because if you get on the Center for Disease Control's website, now the Center for Disease Control in Atlantic, Georgia, is probably the most powerful medical organization in the world. And what it says there is 85% of all illness has an emotional basis. And the reason that they can say that is because medical science, not you know, personal growth, not alternative, but medical science has found that when you feel a strong emotion and you repress it, it releases a quantifiable biochemistry into the bloodstream, which will go to certain cell receptors and block them rendering those cells incapable of communicating with the rest of the cells in the body. And if over time your cells remain blocked, then if illness occurs in the body, it happens where the cells are blocked. Conversely, what they also know to be true is that when you feel a strong emotion and you just feel it naturally, openly, freely like a child, so no repression, no shutting down, just allowing natural emotion like a child does, our cell receptors remain open. And so the journey is actually a direct reflection of what science has found currently. And this uh, uh, research on cellular healing is going on around all around the world. As a matter of fact, my sister, is she has her PhD in chemistry and she's the director of oncology for the third largest pharmaceutical in the world. And in reading my book, she says, that this is what she's finding. So there is a biochemistry for every emotion. It's why when someone gets depressed, they prescribe drugs for you. Now what has happened when someone's depressed? They feel an emotion and they shut down and it puts a blanket of shutdown, a block over their lives. So that what happens is they shut down to their creativity, to their performance at work. They shut down in their relationships and they shut down in their sexuality. So it literally is a massive shutdown. And what happens is the cells themselves close off from being to uptake the natural serotonin in the body, which is your natural bliss chemical. So what happens is someone who's depressed, they think depressive thoughts, it releases a biochemistry, goes to certain cell receptors, blocks the cell receptors. Now at this point, the cell receptors cannot take up the natural joy drug that your brain produces, serotonin. And so what happens is because it cannot take up the, the serotonin, what do they think? More depressed thoughts. More biochemistry gets released, more cells are blocked. And so that's why they're prescribing drugs for something that is an emotional illness because they're aware of the biochemical effect. Now I knew all the science on cellular healing. I knew how our cells get blocked. I knew that they'd already found that in your cells, these old emotional issues get stored and before those cells die, they pass on their consciousness to the next cell generation. So then you could, you could have an emotional cell memory that's been with you since you're eight years old. As a matter of fact, when I went to the medical doctor and was diagnosed with the tumor, she said it probably started as one cell when you were eight years old. And then the cell replicates and slowly, slowly, and here you are 39 years old. By the way, I'm 59, so it was, <laughs> it was 20 years ago. I'm gonna be turning 60 in August, so. But in any case, she said the cells started replicating exponentially, extremely aggressively. In the six months prior to me actually having a basketball-sized tumor, but that it probably started with one cell, and what was really fascinating was that when I did my first journey process, which happened to me spontaneously, the cell memory I uncovered was from when I was eight years old. Unreal. And it was a, a, a cell memory of childhood violence and abuse. Now, obviously, I knew about that, being in the field of personal growth and healing. Of course, I thought I had cleared and handled all those issues, but they were still stored in my cells. And that's what the journey does in a very real, direct, lasting way, is it takes you on that journey 
to the cell receptors so that you can literally expose what's stored inside your body so that you can clear that issue so that when the next cell generation is born it is born devoid of that old consciousness and so that's what the the journey is and does and that's why I work with medical doctors all over the world I'm training them because someone could be undergoing chemotherapy I'm not here to tell you what your healing path should be I never tell anybody what their healing path should be but what I can give you are tools to get to the emotional root cause of what has put the illness in place and put your emotional blocks in place so that's why medical doctors love working with me I don't say don't do what the doctors say I say do whatever you feel guided to do do the journey alongside of it there's also an emotional corollary to the physical illness and that's what the journey is specifically excellent for and so I, I there's a, a there's an addiction clinic in, in, in Africa where the medical doctors solely use the journey for the patients to get to the root cause why did you reach for drugs in the first place what drove you to have to keep drugging yourself and to get to the emotional root cause of the addictive behavior and so yeah I mean I, I even I had a scuba diving accident in um, in uh, Byron Bay Australia and uh, the, the work right now is in 44 countries and it's in 23 languages and so I'm often most years I'm in Australia for a couple of months had a scuba diving accident there was rushed to the hospital and of course they put the oxygen mask in my face and the doctor looked into my eyes and said, oh my God, you're Brandon Bays. And I said, yes. <laughs> and he said, he said, you know, he said, I read your book and he said, I know not everything can be fixed with a pill. He said, I know that there is an emotional reason. Someone keeps coming to me, constant colds or constant migraine headaches. You know, he said, I know something's going on at home. And so what I do is I, is I, I say to them, you know what, read this book. And he said, I keep a stack of your books in my private offices. I say, read this book. And if it appeals to you, do the process at the back of the book. And, um, you know, that's one of the things. And I, I really want people to hear this. I put my work in the book. Most of my author friends, they said, what are you, nuts? You give your work away and I always say but what about the kids in South Africa and what about the man in China and the orphanage that we work with in India I wanted all people to have the tools available to them so that they could go on their own souls healing journey to come home to find peace in their lives and also to heal physically but on all levels of being. And we actually have an international humanitarian organization called the Journey Outreach. We've had over 100 projects that we have in communities where they couldn't afford to buy a book. So in, all through Africa, South Africa, Botswana, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Uganda, through India, there are five orphanages that we work with the street children there. And we've worked with the Aboriginal community in, uh, in Australia to work with the separation because in the 1950s, as you know, what happened, the children of the Aboriginal communities around the world were, it was believed in Canada, America, and in Australia and New Zealand that the original peoples were savages. And so they took the children out of the homes and they put them into schools with white people. Now, obviously, we are a little bit more conscious right now than we were then. And we've put that to rights. We've given restitution. But that doesn't solve the buried rage and the feeling of, of being completely separated from society or the despair and the helplessness. And that rage gets passed on generationally. And so in Canada, for instance, it's been taken into the First Nations people as part of their religion. 
the, it's, it's actually paid for and sponsored by the government for people to get to the emotional root cause that's now stored at a cellular level, at the level of genetic DNA level, to clear all of this that happened in the 1950s so that people can find their way to a sense of being connected to life and connected to God and to connect it to themselves. Yeah.